Hey guys, Cam for 15, drum on my co-host, Thread Wolf. We're back at it with another video for you guys, and we are back with more Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. As obviously last week we had Shun Sweet stuff, which we'll talk about. And then this week we have it to where I don't know, my friend. It seems like my Yori actually does have a heart. Okay, okay, I'm wrong, okay? Shut up. I'm willing to admit I'm wrong. Yeah, see? I'm always right over here when it comes to these things. But you keep doubting me. Just like how you keep doubting the fact that oh, 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 I'm not okay, gonna get okay, me okay, up. Okay, 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 okay. Let's not go as far as say you're always right. Okay, shut up. You you, you know you're not always right, and I and I tend to correct you on, on more than one occasion, okay? Don't 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 toot your own horn like that. Got it? I'm taking the vict I'm I'm victory lapping today. Okay, um, wanna take it, wanna take, well, no, you, we won't do that today, because I have a big day, I have a Yeah, you got a big day, you have a big day of work, so you can't kick people's asses in Sparking Zero today. <sighs> Don't blame me, blame your mother. Now maybe, I'll make sure to send, I'll make sure to send, I'll make sure to send her this video to, to, you know, to, to make her see what you just said. Listen, that's not my fault. Listen, if she got you making to do gardening, that's not me. I'm not rolling around with the centipedes or the millipedes or the cockroaches. I never said anything about yard work, did I? No. Anyways. Okay, then shut up. Move, move on to the review, will you? Anyways, um, yes. It seems like Mayuri does have a heart deep down. And he sees maybe Nemu as his own little daughter. So sweet, so sweet. But before we get to that, let's talk about last week's episode because last week's episode was, oh my God, crazy. Shun Sui mm. unleashes his Bankai. Wait, is this, a, is, is this a dual episode review? Yeah, this is a dual episode review. What else did I need to say? <laughs> I missed last week's episode. So mm -hmm. we got to do a dual episode review this week. Isn't that great? Yay. So I'm doing it. Anyways, Shun Sui's Bankai was absolutely insane with he was doing like all these weird illusion things, and it's like, this is part one of my Bankai. This is part two of my Bankai. This is part three. And the fact that he took down Sniper Boy without with utter ease. Uh, even though he did he did have to take a few gunshots um mm -hmm. to uh handle him and everything like that dude was crazy too because it's like as soon as we got up close and personal he cut like his gun you think okay he won't be able to shoot no more he's at a disadvantage but no he was basically basically using the reishi ability to basically extend to the barrel of his gun so it didn't matter how much you know shoots we cut that thing up um it would just keep regenerating and coming back and making the thing and then he just like He's been transformed into like this weird looking like I don't know what you can call it. It was a weird looking form. He was like a like some sort of like I wouldn't say caterpillar thing, but you know, like cocoon like thing, but can still talk and move. I I, I don't know, dude. I don't know. The, 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 these Quincy's power ups are they're, they're they're all really unusual in my opinion. And then he ended up talking about how he's like one of the stronger ones because of Yuhaba. Like he has like something a part of Yuhabok within him. That's why he's super strong or whatever. I'm assuming it's the eye that he had. Yeah, the, the eye he had. Cause cause he was telling him in the fight, like, you know, you got the upper hand on me, but you see, that's with my one eye closed. God die, I guess. <laughs> when 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 I open my eye, there's nothing that can harm me. And he and it's funny because he, he opens the eye and then it cuts to like um it, it cuts to our boy Shun Sweet running away. And he got like holes in his chest and he's just like, you know, it would be a lot better if I just had died instantly than have all these holes in me, right? <laughs> and it's funny. And then, you know, you get like the last part of his Bankai, which was pretty wicked. It's like, he's underwater and everything. And then you have it to where the one dude is like trying to get up to, to the sunlight because he's trying to gasp for air because he can't breathe. And he basically drowns him to death 
Mm-hmm. Well, he, he also did strike him a bit also, but... Yes, he did. Um, and then, shockingly, who shows up right behind him? Is on Yes. And it seems like he's going to dive. It seems like this is some sort of like, well, I'm going to use this move. It's like a sacrificial move. I take our life. I take his life. My life is also taken. I would I would not be surprised. <laughs> but then again, he does have massive, massive damage. He was legitimately bleeding out. He had a bunch of holes in his body. Honestly, I would at this point, after all I've seen in this anime, do I would not be surprised if they killed him off here. But so uh, yeah, Yamamoto, um, well, his his one friend who who had like the yeah, right yeah. hand, huh? I I know who you mean but... the 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 right hand of uh the son the 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 Soul King. I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. I'm so so sorry. I, I'm I'm just going all over the place. And then now Shun Sui may die. I remember back in the original series, these dudes were like connected at the hip because they were training together. He was like their master, and now they all dead, probably. <laughs> yeah, and they're, 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 they're not holding back here. They, they're, they're killing off characters that we've probably known for like the entire series. <laughs> they they talking about yeah they, yeah they like all right we're we're getting into the next era. These are the next these are the characters that are going to be carrying the Soul Society going forward, right? So you kind of have it now. Nana what now? Nana was also involved a little bit. Um, I don't know what she's got to do, but I know in the opening she has that one sword or whatever. So maybe she'll show something. Yeah, yeah I'm waiting for her to do something. Because um, clearly, when we see these op- when we see the opening, even if it's the slightest thing, you clearly see like in the Nemu part. We saw in the Nemu part of the opening, which we'll talk about in a bit, but. You know, she showed up a bit, and then Shun's was like, "Get out of here! Go get help! Tell them what's going on and everything." But then we know in that episode, she ended up trying to go back. So maybe she tries to go back and heal him before he ends up croaking over and dying, or maybe she's just there, um, in his dying breath. I don't know. Can she heal? Is she a healer? Or... I would think she would know the abilities of Squad Four or something. Because, because yeah, then he's, he's yeah. His squad have like their own. She might girl. be stronger than she looks because we haven't seen much of her do anything mm-hmm. really. So yeah. like, and like she's a lieutenant for a reason. So it's clear that she's a lot stronger than what she looks like. She mm-hmm. ain't just there for eye candy, even though she is hot. <laughs> okay. Anyways, let's move on to this week's episode. You know, it's funny, because a few episodes ago, when we were talking about the Mayori Furcus episode, we were wondering if Nemo was going to do something. And I think I, I think I posed a question if Nemo was going to get involved at some point. And you're like, I oh, mean, no. I mean, I, I mean, I did kind of figure that she was going to do something, ju- judging from the opening. I was not expecting what I just saw. <laughs> yes. Yes. So this episode was the Nemo show. The one time... In the entire, not just this series, the entire series of Bleach, we've seen Nemo do something. Because let's be honest, every time she showed up in the original series, she would just be there to be an assistant to Mayuri and kind of be a self-servient person and just be like, Mayuri's like, take this hit. Okay, okay, Master Mayuri. And she'd take the hit. Mm. Also, I, I know we're getting a little farther ahead. I was shocked the fact that we would we see that goddamn... A ran car, that crazy scientist lunatic freak. Do you remember how hard that man was to try to kill? Yeah, he was. <laughs> I saw the guy. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I let's be honest. Out of all the Iran cars, I think I hated him the most. Mm, he was definitely top I- five, at least. Top five hated Iran cars, or actually no, top three, because he he was pissing me off. Mm, yeah, I think so, yeah. But, you know, we haven't seen Nemo do much of anything. Like, we don't know, like, her strength and her physical capabilities. We All we knew is she's the lieutenant to Mayori, and she basically self-serving thing. And I, and I guess it's also su- suggestive, because they even go back to the Aranko arc. It's like, it's suggested, like, he did something perverted to her or something, because Uri was like, what did I just watch? <laughs> but whatever. We finally see Nemo do something. And it was crazy. Crazy, mm-hmm. and we also find out 
Nemu isn't exactly what we thought she was. Now, when I was first looking at Nemu, I'm like, I wonder if she's like some sort of robot or android, because she just gives off that vibe. No, she's not. She's actually like an organic, like, created soul that Mayori made. Mm -hmm. Something that Kisuke Uehara couldn't do that Mayori did do. Um, and it's crazy, man. So, we pick up what... So, obviously, last week in the Shun Swin episode... The episode started off with the baby blowing apart, right? His his, his bunkai blowing up because the hand came back, and we start that ep start that moment off with this. The baby blew up, you know. Basically, you know, my was like, you know, if you did that, this, you know, I might have been done for. But it blows up. Freaking um, Pernita comes back, and this dude's already on some ape shit. He's on some bullshit. He's firing off Quincy arrows. And now these Quincy arrows have the goddamn nerves within them. Mm. I'm just like, this I'm like, how are you gonna kill this guy? This dude is crazy. So he don't got his sword anymore. And he's just dodging all over. He ends up getting my ends up getting hit. He immediately cuts off his arm. He just like, F this, I gotta cut this arm off, right? Mm-hmm. And then he's he basically gets into himself into some trouble and everything. But then that's when Nemu comes out of nowhere, saves him. She gets her arm cut off because she gets hit by the nerve. She cuts her arm off. I'm like, is anybody just gonna scream out in pain about their arm getting cut off? I guess not. I guess not. Uh, yeah, uh, my ear in that now just like starts, you know, uh, ranting and like, I did not order you to step in. So. Why did, I, why did I know he would, he would say that? Yeah. He tells her, I did not order you. And she's like, well, I just felt like I had to do so. And I think she did it because deep down she cares. She doesn't want to see, in a weird way, her father die. That's what he is to her. Mm -hmm. That's the person that gave him life. And we get, we'll get, we, we'll get later into the backstory um, of Nemu's creation and everything. But he's kind of scolding her, like, I didn't tell you to do this. I can't believe you would actually think on your own to do something like that. You only, I, you only do things I tell you. If I told you to die for me, you die for me. So you stay here, okay? I'm just like, geez. I'm like, damn. I'm like, don't tell that to her. I was about to be like, see, when I was watching this, I'm just about to be like, okay, don't make me hate you now. I'm like, she, she actually cares about you. What, 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 I'm getting flashbacks from when I first saw this guy. So that's when they come up with the plan. And the plan is he's going to basically distract Pernita. And she's going to, ha she has this like antigen or whatever that is going to basically paralyze him and everything. Um, so she's going down, bef she's going down and he's also like spraying like this gas around to neutralize the nerve effect so they can't get their arms in also too they have like this device that sticks in them and it regrows their limbs mm. yeah oh yeah which, which nemo mentioned that he forgot so he forgot so <laughs> if she didn't for if she remember if she, if she didn't get it well then they'd be limbless and things would be a lot worse but i'm just like oh I don't want to. No. Now, at some point, maybe in the far, far future, we have devices like that, that if you lose a limb, we'll have something that you can jet yourself and your limb will grow back. But I mean, far, far future. Probably even, more even, both long, long. even in the far, far future, I highly doubt we'll ever get that. I highly doubt that. Well, technology will inv advance at some point. To the point. Yeah, maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe they'll but like I me. said, They'll be in the far, far future, probably when we're long, long gone. Uh, I think it's just going to be fiction for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Why are you silent all of a sudden? If Denzel being reincarnated into a human being, and he has his past memories, he's going to be like, oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> anyway. what, has that, what has that got to do with Anyways. Anyway, anyways, um... So that plan ends up failing because it doesn't really affect Pernita. And Pernita starts talking, and Mayuri makes the mention he's talking a way of like uh, Kenpachi. And we later find out like when he stuck the nerves inside people, he actually absorbed like their characteristics and their traits. So this man is kind of like acting like Zaraki. And things are going crazy. 
and shit is getting crazy to the point Nemo gets involved and saves Mayuri again and Mayuri's just like why do you keep doing this I didn't tell you to save me but she's like I had to do this and basically she's like I'm going to do this and it's basically in a weird way she's sacrificing her life for Mayuri and she's doing this on her own volition yeah and this is Mayuri looking I see she really is evolving so she then goes up to Pranita and she legitimately like she fires off like this Kamehameha energy blast I'm like oh my god and at the same time just like she says like she's giving up her like soul essence or whatever to do this and then again you get probably one of the most gruesome death scenes in this yeah. entire series if this was the original series this would have been censored mm -hmm. it was gruesome it's like the nerve so the nerves basically wrap around her and she knows like she's dead and she looks back at Mayori and then I saw that and I was like no her body matter literally sprayed everywhere yeah, right around him, even on his coat. He got some of it got on his coat. And I'm just like Wow. Yes, and this this is to my surprise, my area is somewhat affected by this. Yes. To my surprise. So let's talk about the backstory. The Nemo backstory first before we get back to the fight. So Nemo awakened. And he called her num. He called her number seven. So Nemurus number Nemari number seven. That's her. That's her full name. And you know, she so she's grown. She's like probably she looks like she's seven or eight, maybe nine years old. And she's talking with the one doctor with the with the spikes coming up. Said that looks like a demon a bit, right? And she's mm -hmm. just like, why doesn't Master Maiori call me by my name? number seven and he's like i don't know i i can't really explain that you know he, he has his own way of doing what he needs to do and things like that and then we later find out like he's there and the reason why she's number seven is because she's the seventh uh nemu or namari and because all the other namaris basically were all failures um there were like different stages of them and everything and she's the most complete one that's the success the one that was able to grow and everything and do things, right? And again, she continues to ask. She's like, she, she she's basically asking like, what was what is my purpose? Why did you know Mayuri create me and everything? And the doctor's like, look, you know, I I can't answer your question. You would have to ask him yourself. And I'm just like, I'm watching this scene. I'm just like, I feel like he did all this because. Obviously, he wanted to prove he was better than Kisuke Uehara. That's the main point of what he did, what he wanted to do. But, you know, deep down, you can tell. Like, he also did this because he cared. And he didn't throw her aside. He gave her a name and everything. Because clearly, it's like, I'm not going to call you number seven or whatever. I'm going to give you the name Nemu because, guess what? That's your name. And even though this man is a psychopathic lunatic, deep down, I'm watching this flashback scene, I'm like, damn, this motherfucker cares about her. Shit. That's why he ain't calling her number seven. Because he, he, even the do other doctor makes some mention, like, you know, maybe, maybe something, um, I don't know his thinking, but maybe he hears a purpose behind it. And I think it's something integral. And she's like, oh, <laughs> this, I can't believe it, man. Mayori actually fucking cares. But realistically, mad scientists would just call their experiments the number. He gave her an actual name. Mm -hmm. So we cut back to the present and he's just, you can tell he's like my friend said, like you can tell he, he is affected by this. He's affected by your death. And in a weird way, he kind of gets pissed off and he's like, I'm going to show you. And he's just like, go on, eat all in uh, Nemu's, you know, guts and everything and absorb it. But here's the one thing except, you can't do. Except the brain. Yes. 
So apparently within Nemu, like there was like some sort of agent in there where it basically breaks down Pernita's body from the inside and it just gets him to explode. Like, boom, and he's dead, dead. He's done for the count and everything. Yeah. yeah. Whatever was in her body, that it, it caused it to self-destruct. <laughs> yeah. And the only thing to basically make the cure to it is if he had eaten, eaten the brain, but he took the brain back and everything, and I'm like, he's probably going to make another Nemu. Another Nemu because the brain is still intact, right? Um, and he basically walks, he's walking back and everything, he's basically holding on the brain. He then falls over because his legs got fucked up because of the nerves, the nerves got to his legs. Then that's when he has, um, that's when um, What's-His-Face shows up. I forgot their name. Yeah. I Ikaku. And Ikaku. And... I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Ikaku and Pretty Boy. I should have his name. <laughs> um, And they basically... He's like, hey, take me to the pods. So, there's these pods, right? The pods open up. Now, a few weeks ago, we made the mention. I'm like, what the fuck is Rangiku and... um? Okay, to Toshiro. They're no longer zombies. <laughs> well, I got my answer answered. I was about to say, I'm like, are these characters going to get involved or are they just done for the rest of the series? Nope. They're back now. They're back now. They were in these um, rejuvenation chambers or whatever. And basically, Mayuri said, like, yes. I, I managed to get them back to their old self, albeit I took some of their lifespan off of them. So just to turn them back from a zombie, some of their lifespan ended up being gone. Don't know if that's going to affect them in the future, and uh, I don't know if that's foreshadowing for untimely deaths, but I hope not because I want my girl Rangiku to stay alive. Mm. But they're back, they're ready, they're all their old self, they're normal again, and I'm just like, yes, thank God, as long as my... Busty babe is okay. <laughs> I'm just happy Rangi. Hopefully she does something cool. I want her to do something cool. I'm sorry. She got too much disrespected as of late. Mm. But she's just That's eye true. candy, so I guess there's nothing else. To do. But I'm happy that they're both back. Yes. So they basically put Kenpachi and Mayuri in there to heal and everything. Ikaku... Basically, it's like, hey, thank you for saving our captain. He's just like, Amari's just looking at him like, huh, I don't give a shit. Yeah, like, huh, how many times have I been thanked today? <laughs> and then he's just basically in the rejuvenation chamber with the brain of Nemu. And you get this thing where it's like Nemu floating back down to him. Now, I don't know if she's going to heal back because they're in the rejuvenation chamber but I feel like he's going to make another Nemu, use the brain, and it's going to be the exact same Nemu or something maybe different. But when I saw that, I'm just like, he does care. Now, he, he probably views Nemu as a daughter. And he says all these things because, and maybe and realistically, maybe he was saying all these things. Like, I don't want you to get involved because he probably he knew that Pernita was a dangerous thing. And he probably didn't want his quote unquote daughter to die. But she did die to try to save him. Mm -hmm. So he could win. This episode hit me hard, man. This episode hit me hard. My whole thing in a Mayori is completely different. Also, I forgot to mention, even at, so after she died, that one di damn Aran card was supposed to be like, so what is what's wrong? What's that feeling you're feeling? Because he's like teasing, because you can clearly tell Mayori was pissed when Nemu died right and he's just teasing him he's like so this is what it's like to finally see you react like this and he's just talking about all this crazy shit I did not expect him to return out of everybody I ever thought but his crazy self comes back and he starts talking this crazy way I'm like yeah I'm like I, I heard him talking I'm like okay now I remember why I wanted your ass dead I don't like you go away like there's one part I think he breaks his finger and he's like <laughs> I'm just like, nah, we don't need to see this peak 
gay ass fool. Because yeah. if you remember from the Aranka arc, um, or the Waco Moon arc, he was willingly like sacrificing his pawns for his research, right? And he's basically taunting Mayuri. He's like, just give in and just, you just did what I typically do. You know better than me. You sacrificed your little experiments for all these things, right? But Mayuri definitely care. And I hope by the end of this, he makes a new Nemu and Nemu comes back. The brain is still there. My my theory is she'll probably come back as a small child again, probably. Small child again, then has to grow back into a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. This and episode made me simp for Nemo even more. She's badass. And believe me, she's beautiful. She, she's badass. She's badass. <laughs> I'm ha I'm happy. If we get a moment between Kid Nemo and Mayuri, I'm gonna be happy. Now the only next question we need to find out understanding is what the hell is Yachiro? What the hell is Yachiro? Because we need to see what she can do. Well, well if she's not dead, because that's where <laughs> we last left off with Yachiru. She might be dead. Hmm. She might be. But we haven't seen nothing to do with her. Oh, yeah. Now, 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 now let's, get, let's get over to the after end credits scene. Yeah, go ahead. Talk about it. So, uh, the, the, the two girl Quincy's, I forgot their names. But um, they're met up with an army once they get once they get into the palace, and uh, I thought that one black-haired, long-haired Quincy was a fucking dude. Yes, you still. I gotta rewatch part two again because I could have sworn she said she's actually a dude, not a girl. She didn't say that. She did. She did not say that. Um, that one uh, pretty boy uh, was basically taunting her, like, huh, "Are you clearly a dude?" And then she reacted, "Huh." She she clearly from that. <laughs> I saw the baby like ah. <laughs> those those crazy facial reactions. Anyway, to my surprise, she still has her z zombified bombietta and those two other ones that apparently they did it. Yeah, the pink haired one and the green haired one. The green haired one yeah. next to bombietta is the next hottest. Uh, I, I I I I I thought I thought they were. They were, you know, ashes at this point after, you know, Yohaba basically betrayed them. No, not really not. Hmm. I mean, I know Bambietta is still preserved because, you know, she was being hidden under a rock, but... No. Okay, yes. Um, while they were take, taking down some Quincy, Quincy soldiers, uh, they see those eye things that Yohaba has on them, like, which catches them off guard. And then... We cut over to Basby, who's about to take on uh, what's his face? Hoshwolf. 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 Anyway, yes. Uh, Hoshwolf looks over to him like, "What are you doing, Basby?" And Basby was like, "What am I doing? Shouldn't you be asking, how am I still alive?" Yeah, and, and also to Hosh Wolf was like, "Why is Uriyu or Ishida Uriyu not where he needs to be?" So is there some um, suspicions? We know he's suspicious of Uriyu. We know he's mm. suspicious of Uriyu. Yeah. So and the question is: Is he jealous of Uriyu? Because basically, uh, you have bought made Uriyu his right hand man. That that can only yes that our can successor to, our successor that can only lead me to believe that there's more to what Oreo is doing that not even Yuhabak knows. We'll have to but see. We'll then again, I, I then again I find that impossible considering because he's Yohabak literally can. he's literally putting out killing blows against his friends. Mm -hmm. But so. then again. I think I think it's somewhat impossible for Yohabak to not know, considering how many eyes he has now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, that'll be interesting. That's basically it. Great episode, great last two episodes. My goodness, man. I don't I don't know where next week's gonna go, but I'm guessing we're gonna focus on the Bambi fights and the Quincy fights. I'm, I'm fine with that, unless we go back to Ichigo of going up against fake ass eyes and looking Quincy. Hmm. Where's Grim Jow? Is he still? <laughs> Yeah, he still—he seems like he's still passed out. 
I'm pissed. Anyways. Anyways. Um, Bleach Rebirth of Souls is coming out next year. That looks like to be a fun game. Mm-hmm. Another game that'll kick my friend's ass in. Mm, and what if I beat you in the in the in the first match? You're gonna try and to refund it? Maybe. We'll have to see. <sighs> in the meantime, everybody, get your pretzels. Get your pretzels. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> yeah, not sponsored by uh, Stellar Snacks. Anyway, anyways, uh, this is my friend, everybody, he, or my rival, I guess. He will play a game once, and if he loses, he'll he'll refund the game. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of here because I hear beeping. Um, if you guys like the video, leave a like in the comment section. Your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button if you want to get more Bleach Thousand Year Blood War content. <laughs> I think the net the last few weeks of this show, I'll probably be going solo because my friend's gonna be in Mexico for the holidays. Um, I don't know. I don't know specifically when I'm going there, but like uh, what day? But uh, yeah. Well, I'm barring if there's any breaks, because we know Japan also celebrates Christmas, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think Christmas falls on a Saturday. I think it falls in the middle of the week this year, so I don't think there'll be no delays. But typically, maybe they'll just be like, we want to give our workers uh, the week off for Christmas. Trust me, they could use it. Because you know Japan, they, they overwork their people. Discussion for another day. Um, hit the subscribe button um, to the channel. Uh, also hit the subscribe button to the channel of my friend. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, he's trying to get to 100 subscribers before the end of the year. And the reason why I'm promoting this, I can promote this every time you got to do it because that's why you guys need to get over and hit the link and subscribe to his goddamn channel. <laughs> Please, guys. Have a heart, will you? <laughs> Anyways, uh, catch you guys in this video. We'll be back next week with more Bleach. And I'm looking forward to see what the heck, because the next episode title, I don't know where we're going. And I don't know who was talking. I don't know either. It was a green background too, correct? Uh, I think so. I didn't get a good look. Well, let me let me let me look up the last bit of the episode and what 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 the next episode title was called. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Because maybe that could give us some hints as to what we could be seeing. Uh, the mirror transmit. Oh, hold on. It's called Shadows Gone. Mm. Okay, not, 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 not much can be said about that, but. Maybe it's the shadows of Yuha Box Little Minions? I don't know. This is, this is the longest outro better, but everybody. I gotta, I gotta speculate. I gotta speculate. <laughs> Please just go with it. Anyways, I'm, I'm done. Till you end, I'll let this man go do what he needs to go take care of. Anyway, yeah. still the guys. Yeah. Take care of you guys, take care of yourselves, and each other. Peace.